Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the sound system demo of the 2022 Mercedes-Benz S-Class and its 31-speaker Burmester 4D audio system. We've been looking forward to this one for a while. So in today's review, we're going to take a look at the infotainment system, all the cool features it has in there. We're going to look at speaker placements, audio controls, audio inputs, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And then after all that, we're going to head out on the road and listen to these sample tracks while we're rolling, and I'll give you my thoughts at the end. If you don't care about any of that stuff at the beginning, you just want to hear music, click ahead in the video. We've got chapters to get you right to the tunes. And if you don't want to hear our same standard tracks, sign up to become a Daily Motor member. We are shooting a members-only review for this car, so you can hear uh, what more sort of real-world music is like, not just um, copyright-free music that we're using here, but you can actually sign up to request songs as a Daily Motor member. So some of the songs we'll be listening to will be tracks requested by other Daily Motor members. So if you do want that, check the link in the description to sign up as a member. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. I always love the S-Class. It is one of my favorite cars on sale today, and it always has been this brand new generation looking sweet. Fun fact, we've got an old SEL right in there. Shout out to Christopher Brower. He'll be doing a little comparison video for Kicks and Giggles. But this thing is entirely redone for 2022, and it's an awesome, awesome car. So if you do want to see more on it, check the links in the description. We're going to have a DM test drive and highway fuel economy test. But the real story is the sound system. 31 speakers plus 8 exciters. We'll go through those in a little bit. But we always do this test with lossless, uncompressed WAV audio files on this USB stick plugged directly into the system and high quality Roland binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving you the most realistic audio system demo on YouTube. We recommend listening with headphones so you hear exactly what we hear. We also do the test with the sound settings set to their factory default, so let's take a look at those now. Big new infotainment screen on the S-Class. It works pretty darn well. It's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you figure it all out, it works nicely. You can see here we're in the media screen. Also go home and see your home screen. There's radio, we're gonna be going to media. And in here, you've got all of your tracks. You can go through and go to the media or USB menu, if you will, up here. It kind of organizes everything, either playlists, artists, albums, etc. We go by folders. We're in our sound test folder. We can go back. Here is audio adjustments. Now, there's a lot to go over with sound adjustments. So I'm going to kind of start from the top, go through, and then we might go into different sections and cover them a little bit more. But to start off with sound profiles, these are going to change a lot of the different EQ and which speakers are in play and how much sound they're making based on what type of preset you want. We're doing the test in pure because that should be the most true to recording sound. But on top of that, you have surround, easy listening, live, 3D surround, and then this really cool setup called personal sound profile. So I'm going to start and go through the different uh, settings here with this new song, and then I'm going to walk you through the personal sound profile. Personal sound profile does, and this is really cool, I've never seen a car that does this. Right now, I have it set up uh, to be fine-tuned with exactly my preference of music. So let's go back to Pure, it's playing right now, and then I'm going to switch to my personal sound profile so you can hear it. difference there. So how did I get that set up? Well, go into here and hit reconfigure. And you, it starts walking you through this personal sound profile for the audio system. I'm hoping this isn't copyrighted uh, tunes that they're using. I don't think it is. But on the off chance that it is, I'm going to have to mute this section essentially. So it says set your personal comfort volume. 
I don't know exactly what that means, but I guess it's just the type of volume you like to listen at. So you can go all the way from down here to... So I kind of picked right near the middle. I, I, I don't... I mean, I obviously adjust the volume, so... And then it says, set your personal comfort volume one more time. So obviously this is for more of kind of a high-end sound. I'm going to keep that right near the middle too. Now they're playing together and you can balance back and forth. Again, I want it to be fairly balanced. I'm going to go near the middle. So set a volume which you find to be low. Again, I think this is fairly ambiguous, but I would consider this to be a, a low volume. <laughs> Maybe a little bit up from there. And then set the sound which you find to be balanced. So I think this is to make it so when you do turn the music down, you get kind of a, a preference in how you want it to sound. And then we get some snare drum in here, or just drum kit in general, I guess. Set your desired volume for the displayed instruments. I like a good amount of drum, so I'm actually gonna choose a little bit higher up for that. And then here you get kind of a quadrant between bass, speech, brilliant, and intensive. You can go all the way around, more bass, focused, Speech, so it's kind of mid-rangey, brilliant, and intensive. So I guess it's probably kind of like spectrum of mid-range here, and then treble and bass, which is an interesting way to look around it. So I'm going to actually choose a little bit up toward intensive and brilliant, probably right there. Then you've got surround and 3D settings. So surround kind of makes it how uh, far around you is it, and 3D is sort of how high is the music, high and low. So I like a fairly tall sound stage, so I'm gonna go about right there. But I don't like a ton of surround, just a little bit. So I'm gonna have that. And then, your preferred bass characteristics. Neutral, soft, warm, or punch. I'm gonna go with soft. Now we can compare. This is my personal profile, and this is pure. cool? I've never seen something like that. I think it's so cool not only to get your sound personalized for you, what you want it to be like, but also people like gimmicks at this price point. I mean, you're paying $140,000 for this car. You might as well get some gimmicks and that is a good gimmick. Okay, so that's sound profiles. Let's go down to your standard equalizer. You've got bass, mid-range, and treble. Let's go through those now. Oh wait, I should switch back to pure. The screen is a fingerprint magnet. I would highly recommend keeping a microfiber cloth in the center console. 
Balance and fader, that's pretty standard. I think we skipped one on equalizer as well. There's loudness normalization. So uh, equalize the perceived volume to a certain level. Uh, so I guess as you turn this up to low, medium, and high, it would sort of adjust elements of the music to make it seem more natural at different volumes. I'm gonna keep that off. Then the 4D sound. This, the seat I'm in actually has two, what they call exciters that are made to just make a lot of vibration along with the bass. So you can go from zero all the way to 10. You guys aren't really gonna be able to hear this much, but right now my seat is vibrating violently. It's almost like I'm getting a massage. All the way to off. And again, that's a gimmick, but it makes the sound feel a little bit more exciting. So sometimes I have that on one or two just to kind of add a little element to my music, but typically I think it's best to have it off. And then VIP seat, you can focus the sound around one seat. So if I click this, it entirely changes the sound and focuses it on the driver. You can also have that done for pretty much any seat in the car. And the last are just some video settings. If you're displaying video on here, you can choose a certain uh, aspect ratio. So that's everything. We haven't, uh, we've gotten through both of our first two songs and haven't even gotten to audio inputs. So we're just gonna keep on pushing. For audio inputs in the new S-Class, you've got your standard AM, FM, Sirius XM, satellite radio. You also have an, a tune-in audio streaming, uh, kind of radio stream setup there. You've got Bluetooth, USB-C ports. I don't see any USB-A, although they did include an adapter in here. Wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, so that's definitely nice to have. And I think that is about it. So what does that mean you're missing? Well, no disc player, not a big surprise, and no 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack, also not the end of the world. For audio controls, you have a volume slider here. You can either use it touch sensitive or you can click, which is good. And then you have a volume slider right here that's also capacitive touch. I really miss the knobs in the previous S-Class. I thought those were really nice to use, but I guess they wanted to be more tech future-y and they got rid of the knobs, which I think is a shame. It was like a nice roller scroll, felt good, sounded good, easy to use, but whatever. Track selection, you've got the screen, and then you've got your convoluted way of using the, the swipey swipes on the steering wheel either side. This left one controls the front screen, the right one controls the middle screen, you gotta be on the right screen to do tracks. Would be nice to just have a physical control right here, but again, they're trying to be all futury. Speaker locations, this is a big one. There's like 1700 watts in here, which I don't usually say wattage, but I feel like a lot of you probably wanna know. More importantly are the speakers, 31 normal speakers and then the eight exciters that vibrate the seats. And you can see when you turn the media off, can we do that from here? Um, I actually don't know, what happens if we do that? Look at that, the tweeters roll in, and then when you turn the music back on, the tweeters roll back out. That is so cool. These things look the part and sound the part. A lot of speakers, let's see if I can go through and get them all on the first try. Starting in the front, one, two, three, there's a woofer up under there, four, five, six, in the seat, seven, eight, and then I guess we gotta do the other side. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Ooh, oh, wait, there are two more up there. 16, 17, up in the ceiling. And then, up in the ceiling again. 18, 19, right here. 20, 21, 22. 23, 24, 25. 26, 27, 28, 29. 30 is a subwoofer, so I'm missing one. Where is the one speaker I'm missing? Oh, did I, no, I got that woofer. Mm, somewhere there is a speaker I missed. I can't remember where, but you guys got the idea. They're all over this cabin. Let me see if I can get it one more time. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, <laughs> well, that's close. It's, there's, there's a lot. You just gotta take my word for it. There's a big old subwoofer right in the back. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay demonstrations. Start off with Android Auto. 
There we are, wirelessly brought up there, Android Auto. Takes up a lot of screen, but you still get your climate down here, and it is the widescreen Android Auto setup. So you can see we've got Waze maps going in the middle, and then our audio on the right side. And if we click, those kind of flip-flop. You can also bring up Google Maps, and then if I were to click audio, Google Maps would go up on the right side. That's pretty cool. What else do we have? There's your home screen with all your apps and settings. All right, how about Apple CarPlay? There we go, Apple CarPlay brought up. I'm having trouble loading the maps right now since we are using the wireless CarPlay, but you can see it takes up a big part of the screen and looks very nice. There are your settings, Apple Music, and like I said, there's maps, although nothing is loading. Okay, that was a lot, but let's get this thing out on the road and listen to the rest of the tracks. One more thing I forgot to do while we we're back at the garage is this is obviously a car that's going to be used for a lot of chauffeuring, so you all should hear the sound a bit from the back as well. So let's turn up the music and get in the back seat. This thing sounds just as good from the back as it does from the front. Very, very well done.
tracks week in and week out, every single system we test over the last uh, two years almost, I've listened to these songs. And therefore, there's some systems handle them really well, some systems don't, some handle certain songs better than others. So it's cool to get in this and hear every sound of every song exactly how it should be. The highs sound crisp, the lows are powerful, every instrument sounds as it should. It's, it's almost like a, like a highlight reel of all the different systems we've tested kind of combined into one with just their merits. Really, really impressive. I'll turn the music down and listen to the S-Class at 70. I do apologize that it's raining in this section of the video. This is the last day we've got the car and it's just kind of how the weather is this type of year, so we've got to roll with it. Remarkably quiet in here, no surprise there. This next song, a little bit in, we will turn the bass all the way up. speaker Burmester 4D sound system here in the 2022 S-Class. What, did you think this wouldn't be one of the best systems we ever tested? Come on, Burmester makes some of the best systems and Mercedes does some of the best cars, putting them together in their flagship. Absolutely no surprise that this is an S-tier sound system. Everything sounds great. Doesn't matter what type of music you're listening to, it sounds good. I do really appreciate all the different gimmicks in there as well. Yes, I don't use most of the gimmicks on a regular basis, and I doubt many owners would as well, but part of spending this type of money on not only the car, but then the upgraded sound system as well, is feeling like you're getting a luxury, unique experience for that money. 
And those gimmicks help provide that. It's just like whether you're buying a cell phone or a computer or something, uh, any of those luxury type items, when you get up to that next tier of cost, you expect more for your money than just the basics. And this system provides it. So absolutely an S tier sound system. Is it my absolute favorite I've ever tested? Probably not. I prefer a little bit more natural sound versus kind of the artificial gimmicky sort of sounds that this one provides. I still really love it. I still love listening to it, but just me personally, I think I would take something like an XC90 Bowers and Wilkins, but I mean, we're splitting hairs at that point. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I know a lot of you have been requesting this, so I'm very happy to have actually tested it, and we're looking forward to seeing you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always,